All right, so let's make a game plan of what exactly we want to test on the classic Chevy truck with this uh, idle fueling problem. So what I like to do is get your thoughts down on paper and things will start to come together like a puzzle. So, you know, we test drove it, we saw the symptoms, we took some data, and the variables that are in the back of my mind are, hey, this thing doesn't have the original engine, it's been swapped to a 5.7 liter. The exhaust manifolds are new. So is the O2 sensor location appropriate? Again, the question is, can we trust this O2 sensor signal to report the proper air fuel mixture? Uh, the ECU was replaced, and did they put one in for a 5.0 or a 5.7? Question, you know, this uh, these ECMs, I read up a little bit up, uh, on them. They have a PROM chip, they have a calibration chip, and those are very important. If those are there for a 5 liter, you could have issues with a 5.7. So, again, another variable. Also, the injector size. The owner said he, you know, replaced throttle body, I think, twice, and installed bigger injectors. So, everything here. Uh, can affect the fuel delivery strategy. Okay, so those are the variables. Again, you might say, ah, uh, you know, this thing's been modified, and how can you do a diagnosis? Well, let's look at the actual data. What do we see on the scanner? What do we feel, seat of our pants? And can we still make this thing run well with everything that's on it right now? So observations, uh, the oxygen sensor is pegged rich at idle, uh, even when <coughs> excuse me, the engine stumbles from lack of fuel. That is a red flag right there. Is it reporting the actual mixture? I, I kind of doubt it because if it's pegged rich and the fuel trims are going down, 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 taking fuel away, enough to make it stumble. It's running really lean, even though the oxygen sensor is pegged rich. Now again, we saw the oxygen sensor, there was activity uh, when we're driving it. But remember, this is a single wire sensor, and it needs to be hot to uh, properly operate. Otherwise, it's sending a very weak signal, and how can that signal be skewed by the PCM? So, it was kind of enough for the owner to include the factory repair manuals and diagnostic manuals. And I was looking for uh, information on this oxygen sensor circuit. So, looking up the, the flow chart for code 13 oxygen sensor circuit, uh, what, what does it look like? There's single wire, comes from the ECM. And then there's an O2 sensor ground that is apparently just tied to the engine. Let's read. General description, or circuit description. The ECM supplies a voltage of about 0.45 volts between terminals D6 and D7. Okay, that's the bias voltage. If measured with a 10 mega ohm digital voltmeter, may read as low as 0.32. The oxygen sensor varies the voltage within the range of about 1 volt to 0.1 volts. That's lean. The sensor is like an open circuit and produces no voltage when it is below about 315 Celsius, or 600 Fahrenheit. An open sensor circuit or cold sensor causes open loop operation. So that's when on the scan data you can actually see if we look at the open closed loop PID, it goes into closed loop transitions right when that sensor reaches 600 millivolts. So it's at 450, right there, you can see the current value. And right there, it reaches 600 and the computer says, hey, the sensor is waking up, it's heating up, let's uh, turn on closed loop operation. By the way, this is why I love the Varus, because you can analyze data after the fact. Beautiful graphs, you can customize your list, it's just awesome. 
So keep that in mind. Uh, let's go back to our description here. Uh, the code 13 will set if the engine's warmed up two minutes after start. Oxygen sensor is still at the bias voltage. And the TPS is above idle. So when you start driving this thing and the sensor doesn't start doing its voltage modulation, this code will set. The system will not go into closed loop if code 13 exists. So this test will determine if, this, if it's a sensor fault or the wiring or ECM. And doing this test, use only a high impedance digital ohmmeter. This test checks the continuity of circuits 412 and 413 because if circuit 413 is open, the ECM voltage on circuit 412 will be over 0.6 volts. Okay, so my question is, is it possible that this ground is not ideal and we're having uh, a raised sensor level due to a poor ground? Now again, you say, well, only occurs at idle, otherwise it works fine. Well, it could be that since this is a single wire sensor at idle, it's, you know, gets a lot colder and you can't modulate that voltage well enough and the, the PCM, that elevated bias voltage, perhaps can skew the sensor reading and then the integrator tries taking fuel away until it's misfiring. I, it's kind of a, a stretch, but um, I want to eliminate that possibility before going through all these complicated, kind of hard to modify variables. We want to trust our sensor. And the fact that the engine's stumbling when all the fuel is taken away and runs well in open loop when there's enough fuel present and yet the oxygen sensor is still showing rich, I don't like that. So I want to verify this circuit of the oxygen sensor. Alright. So, where are we now? Um, another interesting tidbit. Uh, the owner said that this problem has been happening since the engine swap four years ago, but it, it is getting worse. Same problem getting worse. Something is changing. What is it? <laughs> and he also said that uh, on one of his trips to the dealer or some other shop to uh, fix his problem, uh, the tack and injectors went crazy with the key on, engine not running, uh, and that to me sounds like a bad ground. Again, another kind of nail in the coffin there. <laughs> so, what are the experiments that we want to do? First, I want to unplug the O2 sensor, take it for a test drive, and hook up the Pico scope to just the sensor and see what if the sensor itself can produce a voltage from 0 to 1, you know, we'll let off the throttle, see if it drops down, and see what the level is when we're just cruising, under load, etc. Um, next, I want to get to the engine computer and scope out three wires. The O2 ground, 413, O2 signal, 412, and the PCM ground, 450. Why those three circuits? Well, because if you look at our wiring diagram, here's uh, again system ground and oxygen sensor ground. They're tied together to the same eyelet, or at least this one is, and also to the uh, diagnostic connector. So I want to make sure that both of these grounds are 100% good. You know, if you get like a one volt elevated ground, that's going to mess with the oxygen sensor ground. It's going to cause an elevated signal. So those three measurements I want to do with the ground lead connected to the battery, directly to the battery so there are no other variables like a poor body ground, poor engine ground. Scope ground is on the battery and then scope these three signals while the engine's running while it's acting up 
and see what uh, what happens. Alrighty, here's the scope hookup. First thing, battery ground. I have an extension lead, so we're just using a clip here, the Power Probe 20 foot extension. I ran it into the cab, and our Pico scope ground lead is hooked up to see the minus there, so that should be a known good battery ground. Now, the three connections on the scope channel one blue is the purple wire, that's the oxygen sensor signal. Channel 2, red wire, oxygen sensor ground, that's the tan. And then the third channel, green, is the PCM ground, black and white wire right there. So these three pins, D6, D7, and then A12. So our scope is set up. Let's plug it in and fire this thing up. You can see now it's up to at 0.8. And what's our integrator doing? Coming down, starting the misfire. Still rich. Let's graph block learning uh, integrator here. Block learns at 102. Integrator is all right. So it's in fuel control now. definitely do a custom data list since these data pits are moving very slowly. So I let off. Pegged rich. Ah, that blows my mind. It's pegged rich and the truck is misfiring. So my theory with the oxygen sensor ground seems to be going nowhere because that ground is definitely solid, zero. And the voltage reported looks like it matches what's reported on scan data. So we're going between get some markers in here. You know, 800 millivolts, basically zero. Well, look at that. Can it really sense each pulse of uh, exhaust coming out? Is it that responding that fast? All right, on to experiment number two. Oxygen sensor is unplugged. I got an adapter right from the sensor going to our two wire extension so we can look at that on the scope. Make sure that's closed. Beast up. So I want to see what the oxygen sensor produces in open loop when the truck is running fine. Take it for a spin. I'm blowing black smoke. 
smoke yet? I mean, we're just pick rich all the time, so there's no way to tell how rich we are. <laughs> Unless you take a look at the spark plug or something. So it actually does a fuel cut when you're decelerating, but now it's back up. Decent. Let's see how it idles. So the IX is going to bring the idle down on its own. However, we shouldn't start stumbling at all. 37. And the RPMs. So I think the desired idle is around 850 or something. So I position is 10. low as it can go so actually there <laughs> the owner told me that the dealership in order to like, fix this idle problem bent some throttle stop or I don't know and maybe now it can't be in control of the idle you know if it's trying to close it the IAC is all the way closed and that's you know it's not proper so a whole bunch of variables here. Unfortunately, it wasn't a bad ground for the O2 sensor. So, hey, there's uh, more footage for part three. So stay tuned. We're still working on the Chevy truck. Uh, I don't know if this is part three or what, but you know, after playing around with it yesterday, doing the electrical checks, verifying grounds, uh, the oxygen sensor, we now 100% believe the sensor is good. <laughs> um, what are the other variables? So I was thinking, you know, maybe the guy told me too much. You know, this thing is obviously kind of custom built. Stuff isn't original. A lot of variables. However, if we clear our minds from that and say, what if this truck was 100% stock and this is just the way it runs? What, what thought process, what direction should we take? So the main thing right now is Yes, we believe our oxygen sensor. It's running very rich at idle, taking fuel away, and then starting to stumble like it's lean. Okay, how can that happen? So we have to focus on the emissions devices on this truck. It doesn't have many, but the ones that it does have can definitely uh, be a variable here. So first thing is this thing has an EVAP canister. And then there's no purge valve, it's just a vacuum hose to the throttle body. And I read some information on it. And this is only, vacuum is only applied here when the throttle is open. You know, at idle, there should be no purge flow. One thing we can easily verify, unhook this, hook up a vacuum gauge to here, make sure it's not drawing anything at idle. Second variable, it actually has an EGR valve. It's hidden right here under the air cleaner and it looks like there's an electrical solenoid here with a vacuum line coming in from the throttle body and then going to the EGR valve. And did some more reading. Uh, there are two types of valves that could be used. There's a negative pressure feedback or a positive pressure feedback. Again we can go through some theory but that's the guy I'm really suspicious about because this is a MAP engine, mass 
uh, uh, absolute pressure sensors right here, the map. There's no mass airflow sensor. So what happens when on a map engine you have some kind of you know vacuum leak or an internal vacuum leak like an EGR valve stuck open a little bit? Well, you get symptoms like this. It runs rich because the map sensor doesn't uh, have enough vacuum pulling on it and it assumes that you're opening the throttle and obviously starts fueling more but in this case we're not opening the throttle <laughs> so the extra fuel gets taken away uh, based on the oxygen sensor feedback very uh... you know it describes the symptoms and the EGR valve is one thing the guy hasn't changed in the last four years he said he put the a new valve on four years ago when you put this engine in and Again, it's, it's a suspect. So how can we easily check the EGR valve? We can you know, unhook the vacuum line, see if that solenoid is maybe leaking, letting a little vacuum through, do some checks. It's not that hard. We can just pop the thing off and bench test it. Just rule out those variables. So let's go. The first thing you want to verify is purge flow. Here's the purge hose. There's our vacuum, zero. I'm going to flip the throttle, watch out for this crazy alternator, and uh, see what happens to our gauge. Ready? Okay. So I'm not worried about perch flow. The zero vacuum at idle when it's acting up. Okay, you'll put that back on. Now for the EGR valve. Pop off this little nipple. Put our gauge on there and see if we have vacuum right now. Okay, so we have no vacuum on the solenoid side, which is good. And if we raise the RPM, I'm wondering if the computer should open the ETR valve. Not at all. Now I have the pump connected directly to the EGR valve, the line going to the valve, so if we pump it up, the pump should stall out. It's not holding any vacuum, and it's not stalling out. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, it made a difference. And if I manually Grab the diaphragm and pull it up. Yeah, we can make this truck stall out. Okay. So the EGR valve. Okay, the passages are not clogged. And it's doing something. However, my question is. Is it closed 100% at idle? So let's get it to that state where it's funky, play around with the valve, see what the, uh, what the trims do. All right, so we're looking at our O2, stuck rich, and the integrator is doing its thing. What I want to do is open the EGR valve just a little bit with my finger and see if that will make the problem worse or what will happen. So let's try it. Sorry about the glare, I wish I could set this up with less glare. Turn this guy off. Okay, here we go. I'm opening it a little bit. It's loping, we're still stuck rich. And look at that, fuel taking away. Oh, it's not happy. If you've never seen injectors fire into a throttle body, that's pretty neat. The spring right top of the throttle plate. That's pretty cool. 
gotta get this EGR valve off. By the way, with the air box off, it runs about the same. We still get the steps, it's mostly rich. Well, here's the EGR valve on the test bench, and it looks like it's closing pretty well. So if we put a pipe on and try to blow through it, no flow. It's sealing just fine. So, what's next? And we we're going back to the basics here, <laughs> right? Start with the basics, but uh, always come back to the basics if you go down a rabbit hole or you know you check one thing, another thing, third thing, they all check out fine. Can we still have a vacuum leak? That's my question. So, on a MAP engine, if you have a vacuum leak, it raises the pressure inside the intake manifold, you get more fuel, and that should just raise the idle. It should not change the mixture. Why are we running rich at idle? That's still the problem. And why is the idle really high in terms of the IAC is basically closed and it's still idling at like 850? Uh, so we could check the throttle body settings. We should check the ignition timing just in case and you know kind of do a tune up on this thing and also smoke uh, check the intake manifold check for vacuum leaks I'm not sure how to adapt a smoke machine to a throttle body <laughs> that uh, might be a little tough but we're kind of running out of options here so what I have to do was cut a gasket to block off that intake passage I want to eliminate this thing because blowing through this might not necessarily be the same as sucking on the intake and you know I just did that with the with the pipe and put your finger on this and it was kind of getting sucked in a little bit so I want to eliminate the EGR valve just close off that passage altogether and um, you know <laughs> uh, go from there alright with the EGR valve reinstalled we're warming it back up Let's see what happens sounds pretty good <laughs> R2 O2 is climbing. She's going to open loop pretty soon. We'll just let it do it on its own. Maps at 7.6 to 7.9, which is actually pretty awesome. Alright, closed loop, here we go. Uh oh, uh oh. My integrator did a trip down and up. Block learn went all the way from 123 to 104. Now we're right back where we started, unfortunately. 